Imagine having a new bundle of joy. The baby is practically perfect in every way. But soon, you notice your child is not progressing as his peers. As other children pass milestones such as crawling, standing, and walking, your child remains content sitting. You bring up your concerns to your pediatrician. You are assured the child is just a late bloomer. Soon, though, it is very apparent your little one has something wrong. The child appears to have low muscle tone and has difficulty grasping toys. The pediatrician now notices, too. The child is sent to numerous doctors and has endless testing. Finally, a diagnosis is given. Imagine having a healthy little girl. She flies past milestones and is constantly active. She enjoys various activities and sports. When she is eight years old, she begins complaining she is having a hard time breathing. The pediatrician diagnoses the girl with asthma. The family is reassured there is nothing to be concerned about. As the child continues to grow, she has muscle aches and pains. The pediatrician tells the family the girl is going through growing pains. As the girl turns into a woman, she continues to develop nagging symptoms. She has constant fatigue, muscle aches and muscle pains, muscle cramping, tremors, GI pain, etc. The young woman is told it is just stress. She continues to push on. Finally, everything comes crashing down. One moment she is a student at medical school, the next she is in the hospital fighting for her life. After seeing countless doctors and going through numerous tests and procedures, she is finally given a diagnosis. David Stopp was a healthy young man. He graduated college and loved coaching and teaching. David had a family and he loved science and space exploration. When David was 55 years old, his doctor told him he had high cholesterol. David's doctor said he needed to take a medicine called a statin. David agreed to take the medicine. One week after starting the prescription, David notified his doctor he felt very unwell. He was extremely tired. He had a lot of muscle weakness and pain. The doctor told David he was just stressed. He needed to rest. Two weeks after starting the statin drug, David was too weak to leave his bed. He stopped taking the statin drug, but his health remained poor. Using his extensive science background, David did endless research. He found statin drugs could cause a condition to develop called mitochondrial disease. David found a doctor who would test him for this condition. David was given the diagnosis, drug-induced mitochondrial disease. Mitochondria are tiny specialized compartments located within our cells which produce more than 90% of the energy needed to sustain life within our body. Mitochondrial disease occurs when the mitochondria in our cells fail. When these tiny powerhouses begin to fail, less and less energy is produced in the cell. This can cause the cell to become injured or die. If enough mitochondria are affected in many cells within an organ, the organ system may begin to fail. The parts of the body such as the lungs, heart, brain, and muscles are often the organs most affected by mitochondrial disease because they require large amounts of energy. Symptoms may include seizures, strokes, severe developmental delays, an inability to walk, decreased or double vision, trouble digesting food, etc. When three or more organ systems show symptoms of disease, mitochondrial disease is usually suspected. Mitochondrial disease was thought once to only primarily affect children. However, adult onset is becoming more and more common. Mitochondrial diseases are the result of either inherited or spontaneous mutations in DNA, which lead to altered functions of the proteins that normally reside in mitochondria. Mitochondria perform many different functions in different tissues. This means that dysfunctional mitochondria can lead to hundreds of different types of mitochondrial diseases. Because mitochondrial disease can affect any cell in the body, 
the symptoms for mitochondrial disease can be vast. Symptoms can include attention difficulty, memory problems, seizures, headache, noise sensitivity, light sensitivity, smell sensitivity, blurry vision, redness around the eyes, lack of energy, shortness of breath, mouth sores, fever, dizziness, lightheadedness, balance, coordination problems, congestion, coughing, dry skin, kidney stones, swollen hands, muscle pain, generalized pain, muscle cramping, joint pain, muscle weakness, infections, lack of appetite, difficulty eating, vomiting, gagging, can't swallow, dehydration, nausea, stomach cramps, arrhythmia, irregular heartbeat, low blood pressure, and high blood pressure. Every mitochondrial disease has a different subset of symptoms. Some forms of mito can affect vision, while others may affect the heart. Even two people with the exact same form of mitochondrial disease may have vastly different symptoms. My mom and I have the exact same form of mitochondrial disease. We have some similar symptoms, however many of our symptoms vary. My mom suffers from daily headaches, slow stomach emptying, weak hand muscles, disorganized muscle movements called dyskinesia, macular degeneration, allergies to certain foods, and high blood pressure. I also suffer from daily headaches and slow stomach emptying, but the rest of my symptoms are different from my mom. I have weak leg muscles, hand tremors, double vision, allergies to many foods, high heart rate, chronic pancreatitis, and respiratory failure. I use a ventilator to breathe. Some with mito have outward symptoms of the disease, yet there are many mito warriors who look perfectly healthy. Please do not let outward appearance make you think these people do not suffer from illness. Some conditions, such as kidney failure and diabetes, may show no outward symptoms, yet these people may be very sick and may suffer serious life-threatening complications. A person's outward appearance does not equate to what may be going on inside a person at the molecular and cellular level. Mitochondrial diseases are difficult to diagnose. Experienced physicians can make a diagnosis through a combination of clinical observations, laboratory evaluation, brain imaging, DNA sequencing, and muscle biopsies. Despite these advances, many cases do not receive a specific diagnosis. Some of the specific types of mitochondrial disease include Alpers disease, complex 1 and 3 deficiency, mitochondrial encephalomyopathy, lactic acidosis and stroke-like episodes, abbreviated MELAS, medium chain ACL-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, abbreviated MCAD, and myoclonic epilepsy and ragged red fiber disease, abbreviated MRF. The goals for treatment are to alleviate symptoms and to slow down the progression of the disease. At this time, there is no cure for mitochondrial disease. Most treatments are based on alleviating the symptoms. For example, treat seizures with anti-seizure medication and have physical therapy for motor problems. Supplements such as CoQ10, carnitine, B vitamins, and creatine can help the body produce energy. These may help mito patients delay or slow down the progression of the disease. Effectiveness of treatment varies from person to person. Usually those with milder symptoms respond better than those with severe disease. While there is no cure for mitochondrial disease, there are many medical devices which can help sustain a person. There are IV fluids and IV nutrition called TPN, feeding tubes and feeding tube pumps, BiPAP and CPAP machines, and ventilators. Mitochondrial disease affects the muscles and makes doing everyday tasks challenging. Here are some medical devices which help some people with mitochondrial disease enjoy life. There are wheelchairs. There are adaptive bikes. 
there are arm braces and an activity chair. Every 30 minutes, a child is born who will develop a mitochondrial disease by the age of 10. Each year, 1,000 to 4,000 children in the United States are born with a mitochondrial disease. Exact numbers of children and adults diagnosed with mitochondrial disease are hard to determine because many people who suffer from mitochondrial disease are frequently misdiagnosed. Misdiagnoses include atypical cerebral palsy, various seizure disorders, childhood diseases, and diseases of aging. Still, others are not diagnosed until after death. Mitochondrial disease is about as common in kids as the number of all children diagnosed with cancer. Life with mitochondrial disease is one often fraught with many medical appointments, tests, procedures, and hospitalizations. There are blood draws, CT scans, and MRIs, EEGs, sleep studies, lung function tests, EMG and nerve conduction studies, endoscopies, colonoscopies, and bronchoscopies, electrocardiograms, echocardiograms, ER visits, and hospitalizations. Research trials are underway for some forms of mitochondrial disease. Through awareness, mitochondrial disease can be diagnosed sooner and therapies can be started sooner to help delay disease progression. Medicine continues to advance and provide more treatment options. There is always the hope that one day there will be a cure for mitochondrial disease. For more information, please visit MitoAction's website at www.mitoaction.org or visit the United Mitochondrial Disease Foundation's website at www.umdf.org.